Dame Eileen Atkins, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Please take a seat. Hey, do you, do people, uh, I never know whether I should call you the Dame the first time you meet you and then drop it, or whether we should keep calling you Dame all evening? Oh, please drop it. We'd okay. go mad, wouldn't we? Uh, okay, uh, now you've been, well, we saw you on screen there working with another great Dame of Vieta, Judy Dench. Yeah. Uh, there, and there you all are. Man, that's a great shot. And there, there, how is it wearing the bonnet for those sort of shoots? Do you get used to the bonnet or do you ever feel like you want to shake off the yoke of the bonnet? Well, I chose the ugliest bonnet I could. That it's, that's called a coal shuttle bonnet. I can see why. Yeah. Uh, so I thought I wanted to have the most vicious bonnet. Well, because that's the character. She was quite austere, yeah. wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Dame Judy has gone for the very floor, very girly bonnet. Well, she looks adorable. She Come does. On. I, I often think Dame Judy, I've never seen her naked, but I imagine... <laughs> Oddly I, enough, neither have no. I. <laughs> it's worth fishing there. Yeah. I, imagine, I imagine she'd look like a particularly delectable pink walnut whip. I think she'd love that description. Mm. Mm. And maybe she sometimes puts a bit of whip up. I don't know. Don't let's go into uh, it. Because old people talking about sex is really horrible. Well, <laughs> well we're gonna, I'm going to ask you about sex oh, later God. on. Um, People because there's a specific up. thing I want to know. But here's the thing. Is there a kind of pecking order in terms of how the film scripts get offered around? Because there's you, there's Judy, there's Maggie Smith. You're the kind of oh, three I think great... Oh, well ahead of me. <laughs> in fact, I carefully chose an agent who looked after Maggie Smith so that I could get her leavings. <laughs> <laughs> and Dame Maggie, of course, you work with in uh, Gosford Park. Yep, and on stage as right. well. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. and what do you do? You like doing stage work more than films, or films? I mean, I guess it's a different experience. But... I really do like doing stage work more. Uh, and uh, working in the West End, because I know you've just finished in one, and you're about to go into another. You're finishing the C. Yeah. What's the new uh, play you're starting? The new play is called The Female of the Species, and at last, I'm in a comedy. I mean, the last one it said a comedy, but it wasn't really a comedy. This one really is a comedy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what's this about the play? It's it's in, been inspired by. Um, it's written by an Australian. She was inspired by the fact that Jermaine Greer was held hostage for about 24 hours by somebody who t turned out to be, have mental problems. But um, she's made it very well, I different. can see that would make for a great comedy there. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a nut job holds someone hostage for 24 hours. Uh, but, this... uh, but do you play Jermaine Greer in the... In the... Well, uh, no, it, it isn't. I'm not playing Jermaine Greer. I want to make it very clear. Um, I'm, I, but I am a well-known feminist who's written lots of books and changed people's lives and it's really the comedy is about what f feminism has done to everybody because people are very muddled about it now I mean um, you know I, I think it was very necessary myself personally and I think we needed to become more, much more equal with the men but then you get equal with men and then suddenly a lot of women then really actually would like to be thrown across the room a couple of times or dragged along the floor. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's a sort of feeling about them too that they also want, they want to be equal but they also want the men to top them and it, she's written a very funny, everybody has their say in it, the men have their say yeah. in it as well. Everybody has a go at everybody, and yes. it's very funny. How did you get into it? How did you start acting? Uh, were you a showbiz family, or was it something oh, you, God, just, no. you wanted to do independently? No, 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 no. My father had been in service, which is where upstairs dancers come from. And, so he was uh, an actual a butler or something in a... In a he he was an under chauffeur, and he wasn't even allowed to drive the car. So he was just right. there to clean it and keep the chauffeur awake. To the Portuguese ambassador, the Marquis de Sovereign, so that was the actual job, to clean the car and make sure the chauffeur didn't doze off. That's right. Well, <laughs> or he, he was awake when needed. parties with George V. I yeah. mean, it was all posh yeah, stuff. That's a, a totally different world. Yeah, but my mother wouldn't marry him if, if he stayed in service. I mean, so he became a gas meter reader um, in Hackney. And was that a step down for him to do that? Was that to, yes, to leave a big house? Yes, he loved being in service. Oh. He absolutely loved it. But he, he didn't really mind what he did as long as he wore a uniform. But you, know, you do know, unfortunately, he looked like Adolf Hitler. I didn't husband. know he looked like Adolf Hitler. I don't think uh, in the 30s or 40s I'd have wanted a gas man coming around reading my media who looked like Adolf Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> did he, did, people, well, did he get a lot of refusals at the door? He got something much worse. A very large woman, he was reading the meter, pushed him in, locked the door and called the police and said she had Adolf dressed up as a gas man. <laughs> Why did you think Adolf Hitler, who at the time had Germany under his thumb, would, would start the attack here posing as a gas leader? <laughs> oh, no, no. We were all very worried in those well, days. Yeah, Come on. Scary. He's still not a nice looking bloke, is he? <laughs> no, no. Um, okay, well, and so. Uh, so, so, I, 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 no. And they made, I was at, they, some gypsy came to the door and told my mother that I was going to be a great dancer. And so I was pushed to dance in school. I hated it. 
at three and I screamed and then at four. Finally at five I gave in. I told lots of lies. I said a girl had stuck my head down the lavatory. But they still made me go dancing. And, um, and I, I was baby Eileen and I used to do uh, working men's clubs and all that. So you used to dance? I was on the stage door canteen when I was seven during so the war. you were performing as a seven-year-old, but you didn't really want to be doing this. this no, I hated it. So how long have you been acting for? How would you, as a professional actor, how long, how long has your career spanned? Well, I was 19 when I got my first job. Well, I think everybody knows how early I went to it. Well over 50 years. Well, that's incredible, 50 years. Yeah, that's quite it's something. fun though, isn't it? Now, oh, well, it's fantastic. And the great thing about, in your line of work, especially as, you know, you, you're, you're a striking looking woman, you're a handsome woman as well, but you haven't kind of tried to look like uh, you're 20 years younger. Which are, which, no point. Yeah, uh, but that's great because you get parts, proper parts. Someone, I mean, I wonder where, kind of where they're going to find old actresses later on in life. They want someone who's going to play anyone above 50 because everyone's face is so tight now <laughs> and their lips, you know, they don't look like they never age. No, well, I, in America, I go around and I say to anybody who might be interested, like if you do the casting thing, I say, um, now listen, look, 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 look at this face. I'm not going to have anything done and in your country, there's not going to be anybody available to play, certainly period <laughs> grandmothers, yeah. I mean in a period show, be, I'm going to be the only person available. And then I got Cold Mountain, well, that's fantastic. where I played somebody of 99 or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, spe speaking of, uh, uh, of actors of the same vintage, uh, Joan Collins you worked with in a movie which I've only seen the once and it's quite, it's quite a remarkable piece of work. <laughs> it, it's quite a special, it was, uh, you played a, a nun who performs an exorcist on a baby who's possessed by the spirit of a dwarf or something like that. Is that, <laughs> it, did I remember it correctly? Is that the... It is the only thing I've ever done for the money. I wanted to get to meet someone in Mexico and I wanted the money. It is the what's most it, what's terrible it called? It's called, what was it called? It, it was called well, it was The called... Monster and it had loads of other titles, didn't it? Uh, it was called The Baby, it was called I Don't Want to Be Born, uh, it was called all kinds of things. It was a spin-off from The Exorcist. Yeah. Uh, there's a great clip in which um, Eileen is performing, oh. I think, what looks like quite a convincing uh, exorcism, but on a baby. <laughs> this is uh, Dame Eileen Atkins in 1976 in a movie she co-starred with Joan Collins called The Monster. And that's what, they don't make them like that anymore. That's out on DVD. Oh, isn't it wonderfully terrible? Don't buy it. That's what you're getting for Christmas. That's the monster. Oh, it's out on DVD. It looks like a small version of Eamon Holmes you finished off there. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me ask you about the... This is a weird story. Not weird, but it, it was a surprising story. A few years back, I read in the paper that you were making a movie with Colin Fowl. Yes, I did. The young actor Colin Fowle. And I think during the course of this film, you were celebrating your 70th birthday. Look, this was four years ago, and... Really old people talking about sex well, is thoroughly disgusting. Ask uh, your well, audience. if Colin Fowle came on to me, I'd want to share it with the world. He'd ask for me. I played his landlady. Okay, and while you were playing the landlady... Yeah, well, most actors, um, if you're doing scenes together, you know, people ring you up and say, you know, because you arrive on the set together, you don't, maybe don't know each other, they mostly ring up and say, would you like a drink? I mean, that's, that's par for the course. And we'd, we'd actually done the first one-day shoot, and then he called up and said that night, uh, would you like to come down and have a drink? It's an and get-together after the film, yeah. Yeah, sure, and, sure. and I thought, yeah, that's good, because we've got to work together for another two weeks. So I went down and had a drink, and I was fine. And then I said, um, I was going up to Ron, and he said, he, he, he said, I've got the number, I'll see you in ten minutes. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, hold on, this is a great thing, though. So, you're 69. Yeah. And he's, what, 28 or something like that? Yeah. And he's he was saying, 28 at the end of the week. I'm coming up. Yeah. Ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. So, he thought, give her a couple of drinks, get her primed, bing, bang on the door. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and did I, he come up? I just up? thought, joke, joke. And he came up and knocked on the door? Yeah, and I was in a... Really awful old night dress with a hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you weren't I'd expecting a gentleman caller. I'd spent every speck of makeup off. Yeah. And I, all I could think of was, oh, those bloody maids. I suppose they think they've forgotten to put the chocolate on the pillow. And, and I opened the door. <laughs> there he was. He from the yeah. Was he a bit swaggy? I bet he was. I bet yeah, he was but he, oh, I, Jesus. like I'm saying, we're, women came quite for like loving. That. Did he say anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, from the leprechaun, what did he say when he came in? <laughs> <over? laughs> he's just full of blarney. And he's, he, he's, he's, just a, in, he's enchanting. And, and, so, and then so... But so then, I just kept saying no for long enough to keep him in the wrong. I'm sorry to dwell on this, but this is remarkable technique, the man has it. So, at, what, uh, he came in, you got your nightie on, he knows you're not up for action, you got your yeah. makeup off, you're ready, but, yeah. but he persisted. Oh, yeah, yeah, what yeah. Did he say? yeah what I was, was reading he? a book. He said to me, I said, look, I want to read my book. And he said, I'll read it to you. 
<laughs> oh, and she knows what he's doing. He really does. I'll read a bit, then maybe a neck massage. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah, all know yeah, what he's yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah. And then you said, what did you say to that? And I said, oh, OK, then. If you, will you go after you've read? If you, yeah, I, I'll go after it, yeah. And then but you know he was thinking he had a foot in the door there. Yeah, he was. And then he'd get up and talk it, and then he'd suddenly talk about Oliver Stone. He was terribly interesting. He's a terribly interesting but guy. But he's a very talented man. He's a very he's so man. talented, you see, when we were chatting, chatting, chatting. And then he'd, then he'd lift up the... He lift up. <laughs> they lift up the cover and try and get in. But I he think, tried to get into yeah, your bed. I, I said, I said, Colin, this is Hold really. Hold on. So you just read and he's going. I oh, just settle down now. He's <laughs> coming into the bed. <laughs> what a cheeky scam. He's he's just. Did he? he but did, did he have all his clothes on when he tried to get in the bed? Look, I don't know how I held that up, but I did. I bet he whipped his shoes and socks off. <laughs> I can't remember. That's what. what but that's marvellous action. And presumably, <laughs> so how, long, how long did it take you to get him out of the room? I enjoy getting him out of the room for about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's so lovely. So you enjoyed the, uh, the company yeah, briefly? Yeah, I enjoyed the whole thing. He came to see me on Broadway in a play I was in. He really is a smashing chap. Can I just ask you, and please, if this is an uh, outline this question, you just tell me, but if he'd have given you a bit more preparation time, <laughs> if he'd have maybe had a slightly saucier nightly with you, no. would you have allowed him to slip into No, I honestly think I'm like the general public. It really does make them... I mean, I've got awful things said about me in the papers. I, I never meant it to Why? come out. I didn't think they could find out who I was talking about. Before I got home, there were newspaper people outside my, you know. I front bet, and I bet. And I bet, I bet Colin Flower went home and there were a lot of 70 year olds waiting outside. <laughs> 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 With their keys. <laughs> Uh, how lovely to have you here. Um, I, I love seeing you on TV. Uh, Thank you very I know much. your play opens here in the West End of London on the 16th of July. Yes. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be great fun. I'm going to come and see it if I may. Oh, do. Yeah, yeah, and I won't try and come and read you afterwards. Don't worry. You know, <laughs> I, I, I know you'll only deflect me. Uh, we bought you a birthday present. I know it's your birthday next week, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah, and you don't, you're not big on birthday presents. No. So well, well got tough and luck because we bought you one anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I bought you a nice bottle of wine. There you have that. And I have got a DVD for you as well. Uh, it's not as good as fun, but it's Colin Fowle in SWAT, and it's also got <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson. We've lost the DVD, but I'm going to give you that, and when I find it in the office, I'm going to send it over to you. Oh, thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Dame Ali Latin. Thank you, Dave. I'll find it, please. Thank you. 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 Thank